Alrighty, folks, what's going on? This is Matt here for Dark One Linux Tech Gaming, which is a fusion of Linux technology and gaming. And this particular video came across my YouTube suggestions feed, and the title just caught my interest, really, because the rants can kind of wide and varied. The other videos that I generically do Linux reactions to are pretty self explanatory, especially the ones that make like a statement of fact, usually in the title. So let's get in to see what Homeboy here has to say. Hey everyone, how's it going? I am Zerikon and I am back once again. So I recently purchased a laptop to replace an old one that's almost physically falling apart and because I wanted something with more power than what I'm currently using. I bought a used one off of eBay and when it arrived, one of the first things I was going to do was install Manjaro Linux on it since that's the distro that I've been using. After installing it though, the system froze up on me. I rebooted it and tried using it again. It froze again shortly after. I reinstalled the OS just to make sure that the installation process was fine and was still met with freezes. Then I realized how much of a fool I was for still using the same version which would have been long outdated. So I downloaded the latest version of Manjaro and installed it. There was still freezing. At this point I did what most people probably would have done the first time and searched online for help regarding Linux freezing, specifically within Manjaro and Arch since it's an Arch based distro. There were tons of forum posts about the topic, and there's one thing that I saw that was consistent in most of the ones that I viewed. There was someone who responded to a post by telling the original poster to use the wiki. And this is what I think is the biggest problem for new Linux users. The community. While I'm certain that there are people who genuinely want to help, a lot of them at the very least appear to be the complete opposite. A few people tried offering suggestions, but a lot of them went to the log reports. This was a problem for one person who Community. Okay, so as bad as this sounds, and you're not wrong to talk about Manjaro or you know insert your distro of choice here. Um, as far as the freezing, uh, generically, I, uh, what is the hardware? So in order to help diagnose a problem without the log files, without even the log files. Um, you're gonna basic info of like the hardware would totally help. And I'm not saying you didn't post it. I'm not saying any of that. I'm just saying generally knowing what the hardware is can at least kind of give some type of diagnosis a little bit better. Um, as far as the freezing, I know I've experienced it with like AMD systems and it's usually when it's like a dual GPU setup because sometimes the desktop doesn't know where to offload, which like it doesn't know where to <laughs> to prime its thing, essentially. So it gets confused in the heart of the, the OS will just log. Uh but I will say Arch as a whole, doesn't matter if it's the beginner friendly distros or not, is RTFM. Read the fucking manual. It, I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying any of that. Um some in the community need to do better, especially those that do cater to the, the everyday new user approach like Manjaro, etc. would do. Um, telling you to read the wiki and, you know, RTFM and all that crap is hugely obnoxious. Uh, so generically, I would almost recommend looking for is you're honestly going to get better help generically from distros that aren't the bleeding edge ones um because even the the bleeding edge ones while awesome uh as you've experienced the help can be well lacking let's just put it that way so generically if you look for ubuntu or pop os or kind of Fedora uh, would probably give you more more current if you're on Arch uh, kind of suggestions. But generically, 
I'm not going to tell you to read the read the fucking manual because that is such an elitist jackass res- response nowadays that um, it irks me to no end that people will tell new users to RTFM, give me your log files. And it's just like, or help me diagnose the shit. Like the log files will give you information. That is not nothing wrong with that. It, it's just the rely and then it's like the reliance on the cli and then we just kind of live our myth that you know linux is hard to use so i get where you're coming from with it when it relates to the rtfm mentality because for me it's get the fuck out uh, you know gtfo to those idiots in the community personally and who was completely new to linux and stated that in the post no help was given there The worst offense was when an admin replied to one of the posts, saying that this question had already been answered before and that a new post should not have been created. I have a problem with this for two reasons. One, the information could be outdated depending on how long ago the post was made. And two, the answer provided may or may not be the answer that this person needs. Now, I don't have a problem with spending time looking through different forum threads to find an answer to Link's problems. Depending on the day, it might even be relaxing. But a lot, if not most people, aren't like this. And I don't blame them. It's nice to be able to find a quick answer to a problem so you can resume whatever you are doing. But if it's not that simple, being casually dismissed by an admin or being told to provide information that you have no idea how to access can turn a problem into a headache. That shouldn't be a thing. And I think there's a bit of a disconnect between the hardcore Linux space and the casual slash entry users. The hardcore people seem to expect people to know right off the bat if not shortly upon starting, how things work or how to figure out which commands to use to do certain things. No, see, okay, so I'm not going to defend them, but I'm going to defend them. So those that jump into that end of the sphere, those that decide to go Archbase or Slackware or whatever, those people, mentality-wise, tend to think that you should be self-sufficient. And, you, you know you've done your due diligence and research like basically they're like the fucking lawyers for the Linux end you should do your due diligence and are you know they're like the old grizzled vets of pro wrestling that are you know you got to earn your stripes kid you know kind of deal and that's not the case like that's generically the mentality that's why you get the kind of the rtfm grizzled vet mentality from them not saying it's right because it's not um Especially if it's a distro like Manjaro that caters to the fucking new users. Like, that's now what the if what they can do is instead of being douchey and closing threads and all that kind of stuff and, you know, giving a jackass response, if there's been a duplicate question, just kind of point the user to the other post at least. Like, don't be a, a total chode about it certain things and that's a shame there are people out there who are passionate about linux and want to make things as simple as possible for new users but unfortunately when it comes to troubleshooting these aren't the people usually answering in the forums but in the end none of the answers that were provided helped me i went through manjaro threads and arch threads but nothing that i saw seemed to work so i ended up just trying another distro garuda linux this one worked much better though i have no clue as to why I have Manjaro on two separate laptops that worked without any problems ever, but this one time seemed to be different. But it does. So that particular instance, sometimes it's kernel, sometimes it's Mesa, sometimes it's just specifically the hardware. There's a lot of like what ifs that can happen. I know I have one system that literally has a conniption if i install i try installing anything but an like arch based distro so garuda generically works best um what i will say is now i am not a fan of making distro hopping a recommendation it should be the last resort as a recommendation use what you've used use what you know etc try to fix it maybe get some help uh, you've done all those so you've jumped totally the right way to go about it i think because it's the last option as far as again why something may or may not work it could uh, 
it depends. Manjaro, I can't. It's been a while since I used Manjaro. I, I know they hold back packages, whereas Garuda is just ripping straight from the the arch repositories unless it's using stuff from the chaotic ur a ur so there could be the fact that it's using the zen kernel it could be x y or z it could be that it's using plasma because you didn't mention what edition of manjaro you're using because there's three or four of them um but yeah it, it's it can be interesting when one distro doesn't work and another does but it's like kind of the same base again it's just like what what comes pre-done in the distro sometimes so i get it so i i can i can feel the pain but i feel that we far too often just oh just change distros and it's like yeah it, distros are different operating systems people like I, I, despite it's core kernel GNU crap that you know people whine about because I don't give GNU its uh, give GNU its fucking flowers. Um, you're not wrong. So far too often we use it as kind of like a oh it didn't work whatever or yeah it it is what it is when it comes to that. It should be the last option, not the first, and you went about it the right way. It does highlight the accuracy of the statement when it comes to choosing a Linux distro. Use what works for you. While others or myself might recommend distros based on our experiences, use the one that you're comfortable with and does what you need it to. There is no right or wrong answer. And while I made this video to rant on why I think... You're right, there is... Do Linux distros matter? Yeah, to the user they matter. <laughs> um, so... Certain certain people I really really dislike that are Linux YouTubers, well Linux YouTubers, quote unquote, will say Linux distros don't matter. As your hardware issue determined, they extremely much do matter, despite its base. So, I totally will say that I have my biases and my preferences for me. Honestly, when I do make kind of like distro recommendations. I really hate making distro recommendations for like people who are looking to switch, etc. It because re it really, it's really hard because you really do have to set those biases aside and like what you've had the best luck with, etc. But we, those of us that make those recommendations, have to understand we have to put aside all our preferences and preconceived notions about shit and make the recommendation that's best for the user. So sometimes it's Ubuntu, sometimes it's Linux Mint. Like I'm not a fan of Mint. So you know, like I'm, I, I'm for me, I don't use it. But for other people, it works perfectly fine. Um, Ubuntu, not generically for me. Certain flavors are, but generically, like core Ubuntu, I have issues with mostly because of the all the gaming stuff that I need to do like install and secondary stuff and just kind of it's kind of obnoxious it makes set up like a windows system for me but for a new user works perfectly fine i'm not a gnome guy but there's also that so it, it really we need to get out of this mentality of the, the personal biases and personal dislikes and all the other stuff and really start focusing on like what it, does this person need Despite how much I might dislike, you know, I'm not saying I do, but like people who dislike canonical because they have snaps and all, you know, all the, the philosophical debates that go around shit, bruh, it doesn't matter. You're for, if you're limiting people's options and choice because of your personal beliefs, then you are no better than the people you want to criticize who like Microsoft and Apple who foresee their take on something so if you're telling somebody to go use a fucking triscal system because you're a foss foss floss whatever only person you just limited that person's choice by forcing your own choice upon them more or less because of uh, you know use this use this use this and it's like you know the the whole peer pressure use this recommendation well you know what you're talking about crap and realistically you just probably made the worst recommendation for them potentially or you could make a good one if you know depending on the system that they have 
it might be an option. So tailor your options despite your personal biases and beliefs sometimes. Like for me, I I hear a lot of bitching and whining and complaining about people like, oh, don't use deep in as Chinese spyware. Certain people that are Linux YouTubers um, and others. And generically, you know what? I still download the damn ISO. I still use it. Like, but I also use Ubuntu Budget. Yeah, I use Solus. I use, like, take your pick. I, I use Garuda as my, Garuda as my go-to generically. So, like, I get it, but on the same note, we got to knock that shit off. We really do. I think is the worst aspect of Linux. I do want to highlight people who use Linux and want people to be informed about how using it can be easier than people think. And while they aren't tutorial channels, they do have videos and reviews for installing Linux or using certain programs in Linux. Some Ordinary Gamers is one of the reasons why I started using Linux in the first place. Heck, his video in creating a pass-through for a GPU was why I even started out with Manjaro. And he does his absolute best to keep things as simple to understand as possible. Mental Outlaw is another Linux user who does tutorials on how to install different Linux distros and even how to install DeagleGold OS's onto Android phones, though he primarily discusses tech privacy and security. The Linux Experiment is a Linux news channel, but he does share certain free and open source software alternatives to proprietary ones that you'd normally see on Windows. But while I think that the Linux community can be too demanding towards new users, I think that... So before... Before you keep going, um, I would also recommend Tux Digital. Uh, DOS Geek is more privacy oriented, so that might not be your flavor. Um, but there, there's a ton of like good Linux YouTubers who are helpful. That for, you named a, a couple of them that are really good. Like they just don't get into the the philosophical versus pra pragmatism debate. They just, just, it's a tool. They use the shit. Um, Michael Tunnell is another one. Uh, he's more of Linux new show, but he does have a few tutorials. Um, there's just, there's a lot of good Linux content creators. There's also a lot of really dumb Linux content creators. So do keep that in mind. And subscriber numbers don't mean shit when it relates to it, because I've found some really good Linux YouTubers who have really low uh, subscriber counts, and they sh definitely deserve the one. <laughs> uh, the ones that are far more informational and helpful than the ones that are not. Let's just put it that way. So, anyway, continue. I think that prospective Linux users make using it seem more complicated than it is. Unless you're a power user, chances are you'll rarely, if ever, have to use the terminal. A lot of programs can easily be downloaded and updated straight from the app stores. You don't need to worry about downloading them from the official website or feel like you need to open up the terminal to download something like Steam. Just open the... So, yes, you are correct. And I push the GUI options far above using whatever built-in pseudo insert package manager name here all the time. Um, it, it, it just makes it easier for end users, etc. I, I think the over reliance on the terminal is our biggest hindrance. Uh, saying it can't be there to help fix things, and we don't need to hide it the way Mac OS does. I'm just saying our man pages are all CLI help pages. You create your perception to the outside world. So the outside world's perception of Linux is it's all clicky, -cl you know, clacky clack into the terminal. So perception is reality and people just don't like, it. people just don't like the, that statement, but it is. So we create our own perpetuality with that reality and it is what it is. Uh, as far as touching the CLI, eh, I would say you're probably 90% accurate. It depends. It really does. A lot of it, uh, it's more distro taste and flavor and stuff. And sometimes you will, you know, don't do a lot of tech tips and like tell you, you know, Oh, I know what I'm doing and go and use a CLI and do it that way. Like don't do that. But like, don't get an overinflated ego thinking, you know what you're doing and then blow up your system and then blame the system for blowing it up. Like, 
that's not like the best way to go about it. But I will say there's still going to be probably 10% of the time you're going to have to do something in the CLI. Not always, but I, I, like I'm being realistic here. Most users can do stuff from the GUI at this point in time. Most, not all. Open the store, search for what you want, and click download. Also, each program has been vetted, so you don't have to worry about anything being shady. It's not like the Google App Store. It you are correct unless you start getting into PPAs and the AUR. Arch user repositories, PPAs are the es essentially Ubuntu's equivalent. If you're looking for one, like as close to one to one as you're going to get, PPAs are the, the Ubuntu version of AURs. You just have to add a ton of them. It's that easy. Heck, even installing a Linux distro can be just as easy as installing Windows. Now, Easier. I will say that there can be a slight learning curve depending on your intentions or the desktop environment you choose. However, this yep. is where prospective users make things seem more complicated than they are. If a Windows user uses Mac OS or vice versa, there will be new things to learn. They aren't the same thing. And while people might not like one or the other for some reason, whether it's because they don't like Microsoft or Apple as a company, Apple users disliking how more prone Windows is to malware, PC users disliking Apple using proprietary components, software compatibility, etc., I have never heard either side say they disliked the other because they thought it would be too hard to learn how to use the operating system. This is a stigma that has been attached only And that's only one reason, and it applies to a very select skew of people. You hear whining, complaining about hardware compatibility or software compatibility, all the other shit. You will never hear somebody who goes from Windows to Mac and was a gamer that doesn't have a Windows machine where they're a gamer still. Because Mac OS is an atrocious when it comes to give me Steam games. Linux is a more viable gaming alternative than Mac OS. Hands down. Don't care. You can argue it all you want. That's reality. And so the thing that hurts, hurts Linux is the fact that you have a lot of people who grow up on very specific software do not like change, do not like alternatives, different things. People, uh, you know, the, the old adage, people don't like change. People don't like having to reinvest time and things that they've learned. And, you know, it's kind of the same way when people are like, oh, go learn to code. And it's like, for some people, that's not where they're interested in. Reality is, you know, certain things, but, you know, area of interest does matter. Um, different software requires a different time investment. And sometimes people just want... They, they use this shit as tools and they just want to use the tools and have it constantly work, etc. Unfortunately, that's not how technology works. It's always advancing forward. Well, I use the term advancing very loosely, but, um, you know, it, some people just don't like to change despite things might be potentially better, easier form, etc. Work for their workflow. Insert 9,000 other reasons here. So, that's more of a user issue. The perception is reality problem of the CLI that, well, that's, that's all Linux issue as a whole. And I've constantly harped on that. So keep going. Only to Linux. And it should be thrown out, honestly. Maybe it was this way 10, 15 years ago, but that's changed now. Linux is perfectly viable for the everyday user. In conclusion, Linux vets, please stop being hostile towards new users who come to help. They might not be as knowledgeable as you are, and that's fine. Their experience and reasons for using Linux might be different from yours. Besides, everyone starts from somewhere. And to anyone interested in Linux, don't be afraid of trying it out. It's probably not as hard as you think it is. I'm no tech whiz, and I can use it simple enough. And as long as it isn't something like Arch, you can try whatever distro you're interested in before you install it, so there's no need to feel committed to a particular one before you even use it. But that will do it for today. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. I really appreciate it. And it's not wrong. So, like, Arch and RTFM people, 
stop being douches and jackasses to new users and telling them to go RTFM the fucking wiki or RTFW, whatever. It, it's such a stupid response. Like, hey, did you, this is covering the wiki. We're not a new user distro. That's all you got to say. You don't have to be like, you know, this weird hostility towards new users. Like, eh, like y'all got to market your shit better. Like, <laughs> and that's a marketing problem. Um, now, if Manjaro is doing that, then there's definitely a problem over there because they're like, oh, Linux for everybody kind of mentality. And it's, if they're not catering to that that demo in their forums, then they are a bunch of hypocrites. Um, but yeah. Don't be too, uh, don't be chodes. Be good to each other, as it were, as certain people that I know would say on their content. So just don't be dickheads. <laughs> this is coming from an uh, I'm a dickhead and I'm an asshole. Like I'm probably the most abrasive fucking pro Linux YouTuber there is. And I'm telling you, knock it off. That should say something. And I also sincerely apologize for my absence. I know it's been several months since I last made a video. Things have occurred, but the root of it all was just me being lazy. So I apologize. I'll try not to let this happen again. Hopefully there will be a new video within the next week or so. We'll see, but I do already know what I want to talk about. One last thing, I have a code available for the Steam version of Monster Hunter Rise in the description box below. It's via Humble Bundle, so I'm not certain if you need an account or not to access it. You can try to see if it works without one. So until next time everyone, I am Zerikon signing off. Have a good one. I got nothing to really complain about. Like it, um, I think it's a reasonable approach. I think it's reasonable to not be a dickhead as far as like people who are actually legitimately seeking help. Understanding that not everyone's going to have the same Linux journey, that everyone's going to come into Linux at a different time. Everyone's not going to give a shit about technology. <gasps> I know that's a shock to some Linux users, but realistically, technology is supposed to be tools to help. In order for those tools to function, you don't have to fucking be a tool as well. It's that simple. So, Props to this dude. Um, I'm going to give him a nice little subscribe. And yeah, like I I think it's a reasonable approach of basically don't be a chode, don't be a tools. If questions have already been brought up, just point them to the, to the solution, wherever that might be, and move on. You don't need to be a jackass. <laughs> Especially if you're a modern and admin, don't be a don't be a chode to the uh, new users you quote unquote cater to, and to the arch people. Knock it off with the GTFO, you know RT, RTFM the wiki shit. Like I get it, but on the same note, you know. Just be like, hey, we don't support that. Like, if it's a Manjaro question, we don't support that. Leave it at that. <laughs> That's all you got to do. By the way, guys, uh, let me know what your thoughts on this guy's approach to Linux and his uh, rant. And I really wouldn't say it was a rant, more of a discussion. And uh, let me know what you guys thought and where you see his position at and what is yours. You know, go ahead and tell me if I'm right or wrong on mine. I, you know, I get it all the time. And other than that, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Indigala, Humble Bundle, all that stuff. Join, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. And I will catch you guys later. Peace.